Hi, I'm Jenny Gray. I'm the Chief Executive Officer here at Zoos Victoria. Today, I'm at Healesville Sanctuary and I'm standing outside of our Fighting Extinction headquarters. Many of you will have gone through this building and learned about some of the incredible work we're doing to save some of our most endangered species. And in particular, the super cute mountain pygmy possum. But what you don't know is all the work we're doing behind the scenes. So come with me and I'll introduce you to some of the staff working on it and show you where we're doing this incredible work. Marissa, thank you so much for joining me. We're here to talk about, I think, your favorite animal. It is mountain pygmy possums and antichinus, I must admit, joint favorite animals. They are just amazing marsupials. Marissa is one of the world's leading tiny mammal experts and probably in Australia you have a, a formidable reputation working with these little creatures. Can we just give everyone a, a sense of size? I know they're going to see them on the screen, but how big is a mountain pygmy possum? Mountain pygmy possums are tiny and it's in the name pygmy possum. They're really a tiny little animal that could fit into your hand, but they actually change in size quite a bit. So before they go into hibernation, which is when they spend five to seven months asleep under the snow, they can be about the size of a tennis ball. But then during hibernation, they lose half their weight and they're about half that size. So they really are just a tiny, beautiful, miniaturized little animal that is still super tough. I love this fact about mountain pygmy possums is that they actually double their body weight through summer. What a great life cycle that you just, you know, you emerge in spring, you're super cute, and then you spend the whole of summer eating, you sleep it off over winter. These guys have just got it sussed out, right? They absolutely do. They're actually Australia's only hibernating marsupial. They're our only animal that you find only up in the alpine zone. And they have this amazing life history where they wake up at about, say, 40 grams or so. They breed, they travel, they spend all of their spring meeting other possums, making their youngsters, and then putting on that weight over autumn. So they double their body weight. They, they're Australia's biggest losers, but also <laughs> Australia's biggest gainers. Great little lifestyle, but why are we worried about them? How did they get to be listed as one of our fighting extinction species? The mountain pygmy possums actually have a really interesting history in that for a long time, we thought they were extinct. They were only known from the fossil record. And then back in 1966, someone found a living mountain pygmy possum in a ski resort in Mount Hotham. And people realized that this remarkable little animal was actually still alive. Unfortunately, they are critically endangered though, before people found that they were still alive and out in the boulder fields, there was a lot of historic habitat destruction to make way for roads and for infrastructure. There's also a large number of introduced species like feral cats and foxes up in the boulder fields. And then you've got climate change on top of that. So unfortunately, they do need a really thick blanket of snow to survive the winter. Another big issue that we found just in the last few years, and again associated with things like a changing climate and drought, is a lack of food. So every year we have a beautiful species called the bogong moth. It's a migrating species of moth, which is remarkable for a tiny little animal about an inch long. They can fly a thousand kilometers from their breeding grounds up to the alpine zone and they arrive often in numbers around 4 billion. So it's the biggest, second biggest influx of nutrients into the area after the sun. And in 2017 and 2018, those billions of moths were nearly undetectable. And that's the main food source for the mountain pygmy possums coming out of their hibernation. And because there wasn't that food, a large number of the females, up to 95% in the worst affected population, actually lost their full litter of young. And the big issue there is, this is a critically endangered species. There are only around 2,000 of them left in the world. We also saw last year the major issues with bushfires. And so the pygmy possums have a lot of threats. We didn't know they existed and now they're critically endangered, which is why we all have to work together to try and protect them. There are things that everyone can do to help them. Things like turning off their lights to help the bogong moths, planting native foods for the bogong moths as well and using moth tracker. 
Here at Hillsville Sanctuary, we do a huge amount with the mountain pygmy possums too. We have the world's only captive breeding program where we do a lot of research uh, to try and help the possums learn as much as we can about them. We've done reintroductions out to the wild. We work with partners out in the wild, putting in things like new tunnels underneath the roads with Mount Hotham and with Delp so that we can ensure possums can travel properly and safely. One of the more recent programs, and one that I'm really proud of, is developing a new type of food for them. When the bogong moths, their main food source in spring, largely failed to arrive, we worked with the Mountain Pygmy Possum Recovery Team to look at the different tools we might need in our toolkit in the future to help the possums. For us, it was developing and trialling this new food called bogong bickies, which can act as a replacement for the bogong moths. And so we're working out in the field. I've actually just gotten back from one of our trips to trial this food, to make sure it's safe, so that we can work out the best ways to deliver it. And it's actually a food that in New South Wales, our partners used after the fires to help the possums. Talking mountain pygmy possums, for us at Zoos Victoria, success is not animals in our care, it's animals back out in the wild thriving. Are you optimistic for the mountain pygmy possum? I'm always optimistic for the mountain pygmy possum. I really think there's so much that we can do together to help them. I've been really proud to be involved with the breeding program here at Hillsville for about 14 years now. We've uh, bred and raised more than 130 little baby possums. But my favourite thing is seeing them out in the wild and being able to work with them out there. I think together we can have this bright future for the mountain pygmy possum. We all just need to focus on them, to love them, to protect them, and to make sure they're still around in the future. It's a beautiful hot summer's day here at Healesville Sanctuary. But as Marissa told you, for our mountain pygmy possums, it's really important that we can replicate the conditions in which they live. So what you can see behind me are cooling containers where the mountain pygmy possums live. It's in here that we're able to adjust the temperature to get it down to two degrees so that we can replicate the conditions they live in in the wild. It is the work that we do here behind the scenes at Healesville Sanctuary that is helping us to know so much more about these incredibly cute animals, to learn what we need to do to help them and to come up with strategies to make sure that this population thrives well into the future. Thank you for your support and together we can fight extinction.